welcome to the NBA Show Review and Discussion Podcast. I am your host, Norman Sanjo. Joining me today is Silver Quill. Yakety Sax, don't talk back. Yeah, that's a nice song for the olden days. Yeehaw! Also joining us today is Torterra. Sorry, could you repeat that? My, I can't really hear from all that playing. <laughs> and also joining us today is Torterra. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, boys. So, anywho, in this episode, we are going to review Season 8, Episode 18, Yakety Sax. In this episode, Pinkie Pie picks up playing a bizarre instrument as a new hobby, but her friends get annoyed by her ability to play it. So, before we head in, let's go into first impressions. Silver, what do you think? Eh, this episode's a bit of a struggle. One, it's based entirely around Pinkie Pie being annoying, and... Due to her very loud and expressive nature, it can wear out its welcome very fast. Not to mention that, well, we'll get into this in the nitty gritty, but this is one of those times where she's not just unintentionally annoying, she has to seek the others out to do this. So there's an intent to it. And then her friends themselves don't do a very good job offering a constructive criticism, so believe me, I'm going to have an opinion on how they deliver the message. True that, true that. And Tara, what do you think? I have mixed feelings about this episode. I don't know if I should like it or if I should hate it. <laughs> <laughs> so what's your initial feeling? Like, uh, remember, this is first impressions. First impressions? Uh, confused. <laughs> confused? Because <laughs> I, I wasn't sure if, like, I'm not, I didn't really quite understand the message, but, like, like I'll give my full opinion later on. <laughs> All right, then. And as for me, this episode was a confusing journey. I got no idea what I was looking at or watching. It's one of those cases where if I were to explain the show or this episode to a friend, my friend would question my sanity and my quality of show that I watch. So yeah, this is not a really good episode to show anyone as a beginning. It shows all the bad side of Pinkie Pie. And you know what? Let's just get into the discussion because we can talk a lot about this, our first impressions and whatnot, but we want to get into the nitty gritty. So if you have not watched this episode yet, pause here. Welcome back. So we start off the episode with Fluttershy, best pony, um, picking up flowers and whatnot. Suddenly, there's a cry for help. It seems that a wild beast of sort is in trouble. And... Fluttershy, being the caretaker of animals and whatnot, goes to find said animal and tries to tend to it while Angel Bunny is hopping along with her. And it's discovered that it is just Pinkie Pie playing the, whatchamacallit, um, what is the instrument that she was playing? Uh, let's see here, transcripts. There's the Uvidaphone. Yeah, Uvidaphone, yes, thank you. Uvidaphone, yes, thank you, thank you. So, um, and honestly, the UD for f- <laughs> I cannot say that fast. <laughs> the U, the U, mm, what's the, uh, Uvida phone is our world's, or is their world's, um, bagpipe, or the Scottish bagpipe. Which instantly raises a question. Oh. Does this mean that the, that the yaks are the ones to sing Danny Boy? <laughs> no comment. Oh, Danny Boy, the pipes, the pipes are calling. <laughs> Uh, but anywho, after, well, Fluttershy discovering Pinkie Pie playing the Uviraphone, it just goes on a, well, one of those scenes where, hey, look at me, I'm playing the Uviraphone. Is it good? And nah, it ain't good. We, we cut to intro and yeah, before we go on to the next screen, anybody want to say anything? Well, Pinkie's following up on our musical talent from, uh, from the Flugelhorn. Which really should say something. I mean, she was so grand at playing at being a one mayor band back in uh, the oh the Paris Pride episode, Swarm of the Century. But then you get Flugelhorn, you get uh, this monstrosity. I don't know where did her musical talent go. Uh, you know what, Pinkie Pie is technically the most musically talented out of all of the ponies. So yeah. But anywho, after intro, we get to see Pinkie Pie playing the Uvilaphone at the uh, gazebo. 
And all of her friends are questioning their sanity on why are they listening to this now. And being kind, they just say to Pinkie Pie, Yeah, Pinkie, uh, um, we're happy for you that you have a new hobby. Like, it's good you have new hobbies. Yes, 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 yes. And a and a airplane is so bad that a bird loses all its plumage. Oh, God. Um, Poor thing. Yep. <laughs> and... Yeah, at the same time too, like everybody here is just being nice to Pinkie Pie because hey, you, you have a new hobby. If it makes you happy, we're happy for you too. Don't do that in public, Pinky. That's very obscene. Really, Norman? What what kind of hobby are you envisioning here? This <laughs> sounds highly inappropriate. Have you seen her? She is those googly eyes at the Juvidophone. Like that's not normal, y'all. But it's so Wait. annoying. <laughs> Wait. She should put googly eyes on the Uvidaphone. That would be awesome. <laughs> I, I feel, I feel kind of bad for it, so I gave him woogly eyes. <laughs> oh boy! So anywho, as Pinkie Pie plays off, the other ponies try to say, like, yeah, I mean, she just started a week ago, so who knows? Maybe she'll get better and improve. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes sense. And let's just say a few moons pass, and no. She's not. And here's where Silver mentioned that this time around, Pinky is just being annoying for the sake of being annoying. Well, in her eyes, it's enthusiasm. She wants to share in this great joy. But here's the problem. She keeps going into their homes. This is a complete lack of boundaries. Uh, Like first she invades Rarity's place and undoes her stitching. Fluttershy, why all these animals are sleeping in her place rather than in the sanctuary, I don't get. But Pinky's Pinky's playing this at all odd hours of the night, interrupting a Wonderbolts uh, performance, which I gotta say, how many times have they been interrupted since Rainbow Jazz joined the team? <laughs> oh, boys. Rainbow Dash is a mistake. You gotta be fired. <laughs> you know, I'm starting to worry. That might end up being the case. So, but she's not captain, so... She could be benched for whatever she needs to do. So, yeah. Or maybe Rainbow Dash just gets a memo. Uh, you're not allowed to bring anyone to shows ever, <laughs> ever again. I mean, your your parents lighted fireworks and your friend just made us all deaf <laughs> and ruin and ruin music for us. We're going to we're going to bench you until uh, before one of your relatives or friends kills someone. <laughs> oh, suddenly Princess Celestia comes along. <laughs> and then there's Applejack, which, okay, Pinky's just bouncing along her merry way, but she's also turning everything into applesauce. And I'm just like, okay, now you're having a, a, an impact on their their life their lifestyle, their livelihood. Yeah, I mean, you could say that for rarity too, but still. I think it's easier to fix a, a bad seam than it is... Uh, destroy the entire apple produce <laughs> true that well, i mean true. they are related aren't they uh, not confirmed <laughs> so, so no no one can ruin your day like family yeah <laughs> yep you think that she'd have at least a bit of respect on what they do like for example fluttershy at nighttime she's taking care of the animals and she doesn't think oh she's animals are sleeping okay i won't ruin their sleep and she's like nope i'm gonna play the a bit of phone and wake everyone up <laughs> Because it's a smooth, soothing sound that will make the animal go to sleep faster. <laughs> That's what I'm thinking. I don't know. Just like, why, Pinky? Yeah, we'll get to that when we do the discussion. But um, on the we're, next scene, we're, we're, I thought we were in the discussion. Oh, really now? So because here's the thing. Um, there's two versions of Pinkie Pie. The tolerable one and the untolerable one. And the Pinkie Pie we're getting now is from, uh, what was that episode again where she was climbing on the walls? Oh, uh, Philly Vanilli. Yeah, this is the version we got. Well, I think there is a third Pinkie Pie, the one who's genuinely enthusiastic and supportive. Ah. And she's a delight. Oh, She's yeah. wonderful. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, I forgot about that version. Yet. But still, here's the thing. Pinkie Pie... <sighs> It's hard to write for Pinkie Pie because in uh, in the hands of a bad writer, 
she's your stereotypical uh what you might call this punchline punchline and also airhead where the writers don't really know what to do for her they just write her silly because Pinkie Pie is silly so they they set stereotypes at the very beginning of the show but subvert them for our expectations later on that's why we like them but when you write them as they are now we're not getting the pure character like Fatesha is a shy one but she's not shy anymore because she got past that oh no we're going to write her shy again and so on so with Pinkie Pie here it's a double edged sword and who wrote this one again uh, yeah new writers Michael P. Fox and Will Fox so anywho anything to add Silva or should I move on to the next scene uh, just that watching Pinky be oblivious to her friends, it's its showing her at her worst. And honestly, I've never seen it done in a way that you feel like, okay, yeah, I've, I've been like that sometimes. Us? Yeah, well, you know, when you're interacting with people and sometimes you're so excited, then you realize, oh, hey, wait, I'm not being very considerate of other people. You have to rein in the energy. True, true. I think, true. I think a lot of people have been in that situation, but... They play all this up for a comical extreme, but in doing so, it becomes unrelatable. Yeah, I understand that. Oh, boy. But anywho, uh, in the next scene, we get to see Twilight Sparkle relaxing on a bench, reading her entire library. Spike comments like, yo, Twilight, I know you like reading, but could we just keep the books in the library and whatnot? Like, you just check out one or two books? Like, that would work. I envy your speed reading. <laughs> Uh, but anywho, Applejack and the gang comes along to talk to Twilight about Pinkie Pie. And she says like, Pinkie Pie? Problem? Okay, you know what? I got a spell for this. Let's magic this away. And Applejack says, yo, Twilight, remember when you didn't, remember when you were not honest with the pony and <laughs> Celestia? Uh, that didn't turn out well, right? So let's do this the traditional way. And so they do. Pinkie Pie hops along and, well, performs for the crowd or something like that. And yeah, the, the, the other guy says like, Pinkie Pie, we have something to tell you and that is your, your Vitaphone playing is bad. And I think you should stop playing it. Yes. Ugh. This is what I mean by a bad critique. Although I, I am obligated to say from uh, Applejack's uh, putting Twilight in check. Continuity! Yay! <laughs> oh, boys. But in all honesty, in all honesty, um, with this one, uh, I, I don't know. Here's where I'm split on this. And I'm going to let you have the floor first, Silver. Oh, I thank you. It's such a dice floor. <laughs> Ooh, is that a fresh polishing? Yes. Polishing? I use pledged on it. Ooh, very nice. <laughs> All right. Well, okay, let's talk about this critique because they're trying to alert Pinky to what she's doing wrong, but then the message shifts. What they're saying is you should only do what you're good at. And meanwhile, Sweetie Belle is off to the side with her terribly crocheted hat that she loves ever so much, saying, Oh, come on! <laughs> uh... So. So right off the bat, this is not a good critique. Mm -hmm. It's it, one. It's it's simply saying you're bad at this, and you should stop. And that's assigning yourself too much authority. You're dictating how the person should behave beyond the criticism. What they could have said is, "Look, we we appreciate that you love your new horn, but l look at the impact it's having on everyone." Point to half asleep Fluttershy. Would you like? And this is an episode where you could either a Get Yona Yak to have a role. I mean, this is Yak culture. There's a Yak in the school who could help. Hey, hey. Or say, would you like it if we arranged for a Yak to come visit Ponyville, put on a performance, and maybe give a little tutorship? And Pinky would be like, yay! A full, a full Uvidaphone concert! Best idea ever! And you would look smart. But this whole, you're not good, so don't try is the worst kind of critique you could give someone. It's simply for your it's simply to boost your ego 
or uh, to make yourself look smart or to apply to your own comfort, which is what her friends are really doing. It's a bad criticism. True, but at the same time, too, um, if you look at it, the main five here or yeah, yeah, the, the rest of the ponies, they're just they're trying to calm the chaos that's happening. Uh, unfortunately, that chaos set is Pinkie Pie. And they have to kind of rein her in because she's creating a muck. And in all honesty, the way that they go about it, saying that she should just stop and don't play it anymore, is a bad lesson. Here's the thing. For you guys at home, if you enjoy doing something that's good, keep at it. But if it's affecting your surroundings, then you have to rethink what you're doing. In the the lesson here for this scenario here right now in this episode is what the other ponies should say is that Pinky, we're happy for you, but you gotta stop playing in public because it's really affecting the community. Maybe you should go to an underground cave or something or soundproof room so you can play it privately, something like that. Because you won't be hurting anyone. The way that they're going about it is like Pinkie Pie, you should stop. Like, this is not good. It's not good for your image. So, yeah. Nah. They've been on the internet too many times. <laughs> Probably. Uh, Dara, what do you have to say? Pretty much what Silver said. It's like, yeah, I mean, they could have just said, Pinky, you gotta turn it down and play it, not play it in public. But no, they just, they just straight up tell her and be like, y- you're bad at this. Stop playing. It's like, wh- what? You just said earlier that sh- she just needs to work on her uniform playing. And you're telling her now she needs to stop? Yeah, but that's because she's been playing for moons now. So I'm just going to translate that it's been playing for months and she hasn't improved. It's like when one of your parents sent you to a piano lessons and you're not getting it and then they're just wasting their money on the lesson. So yeah, just stop it. True. And because everyone has different talents. So it's, um... Like that one episode, I forget the name, but it's the one with uh, Thunderlane's brother. Ah, uh, I forgot about that one, yes. But still, is it, the, the difference between that one and this one is that this one is just a hobby. And the thing is, the cutie mark doesn't really say anything about hobbies. It's just like, if you enjoy painting and you're not good at it, but you still enjoy it, you should just keep it up because you you found happiness and whatnot. In this scenario here, Pinkie Pie's enjoying playing the uvidaphone but it's affecting the surroundings and that's not good but anywho uh, as we move on uh, we get to see Pinkie Pie feeling sad about her uvidaphone that she dumped and yeah it's affecting her because the next day we see her being uh, Pinkie Gloom what's they call this one like what was it Pinkamina yeah Pinkamina she's being all Pinkamina not being happy and whatnot, and just being all gloomy and stuff. Like, long story short, she's just gloomy McGloomerson. And her friends decide to try and cheer her up by doing the things that she loves. And nah, it ain't working. It ain't working at all. And uh, in the next scene, they go up to Twilight. And Twilight declares that, hey, today is Pinkie Pie Appreciation Day. Let's set up a party for her. And when she doesn't come, the others go and fetch her, only to discover that her room is empty and Mott is taking her stuff away to the rock farm. And in all honesty, I do not like Mott in this scenario here. She's just a... What was the word I'm looking for? Petty. Yes. Do you think she's being passive-aggressive towards them? Like, yes. I blame you. Can you see the anger fl- firing in my eyes? <laughs> oh, yeah. I will... Cr- I will crush you with my bitterness. <laughs> yep. Rawr. See, yeah. I mean, it could be true because Pinky probably told them about uh, her not, her friends telling her not to play the Uvidaphone, and then that's why Mod's probably being that way because, you know, her sister is hurt. True, but still, the way that she's acting here is very immature. Like, can I ask you a question? You just did. Well, that that's Mod in a nutshell. She <laughs> She's very literal minded. True, I think but... she's been been with Mudbriar for too long. Oh yeah, that's true. Oh god, don't pick up his worst traits. Just try to make a better stallion out of him. Well, technically. <laughs> Yo. ah. Ah. Although, 
Can we also say that this is an overreaction on Pinkie Pie? I can't play the Uvidaphone, so I'm leaving my friends forever. But that's Pinkie Pie in a nutshell. She's she does things to the extreme. But she loves Ponyville to the extreme too. Not when she lost her love of her life. Well, that's just great. So from now on, we can always say we're all best friends, except when you don't like my Uvidaphone. When push comes to shove and, like, you're dangling off a cliff and the vid phone's about to go, I hope you'll have a swift impact and won't leave a mess. <laughs> oh, my yep. God. That's what's in my head right now. That's what this episode's doing to me. Yep. But anywho, Mont just says she's moving to Yakistan because her love of her life is there and I blame you ponies for this. I'm going home. And the rest of the pony says, we gotta get her back. Ponyville needs Pinkie Pie. And Twilight just says, yo guys, chill. She didn't say goodbye. Let, let's go to Yak Yakistan and say our goodbyes and tell her that, hey, Ponyville still needs you and stuff. And if she decides to come along, that's great. If not, we can just stuff her in a bag and drag her home. Okay, I want to see that episode. <laughs> uh, yay! Just like... <laughs> Friendship abduction. Yay. I would, I, I'd actually be curious how that would turn out. Because in the past, when Rainbow tried to get Pinky to get to the farm, she was, like, struggling to get her there. <laughs> we shall see. It's not illegal. <laughs> but anywho, uh, the ponies fly to Yakistan and stumble upon a bar. And said bar has this wonderful music being played. And it's being played on the Uvidaphone. And everybody's surprised. Like, what? That's a Uvidaphone? That sounds amazing. Nothing like Pinkie Pie. Wow. Okay. And we get to see Pinkie Pie at the bar being a goofy goober. And she's depressed. Even with ice cream, she feels nothing. See, we should have Sapphire here so because she knows this old goofy goober. She's a youngin. Uh, this is a SpongeBob oh, episode, this... or oh, a SpongeBob song from the movie. Yeah, no, I was in the, I was in a transitional time where I didn't watch cartoons when SpongeBob was at his zenith. Oh, well, you should watch the movie. It's a lot of fun. Hasselhoff is in there. Maybe Saf- Safi can't join us because she's watching Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> she done well better. Uh, so, any hoodie ponies come along and says. Yo, Pinkie Pie, uh, we, we miss you, and Ponyville needs you and stuff. And Pinkie Pie just says, yeah, I'll go back to Ponyville. I was like, that was easy. Yo! And Twilight just says, nah, look at her. She's not feeling well. And the yak that playing the Uvidaphone talks to Pinkie, says, Pink Pony, take care of your Uvidaphone while I go to Little Yak's room. Yes. Then I go... Then I go and catch moose and squirrel. <laughs> what? <laughs> no, no, no comment. So, anywho, um, we get to see Pinkie Pie acting strange around the Uvidaphone. And, yeah, Twilight just says, Pinky, if you love the Uvidaphone, you should play it. Like, forget what we say and just play. Just play because you really enjoy it. It makes you happy, and we're wrong. We're sorry that we told you to stop. And Pinkie Pie is excited, but she says, like, Guys, playing here? Um, If you haven't noticed, we're in Yakistan, where everything needs to be perfect. And my playing on the Uvidaphone is not. And Rainbow Dash just says, You know what? Screw them. If they don't like your playing, they have to go through us. Fluttershy first, then us. And no yak could smash something that cute. Yeah. It's too precious. Except maybe Rutherford. Oh, but I, I call for I call for a yak coup. <laughs> uh, yes. But anywho. Uh, Rainbow Dash announced that, hey, the Pinkie Pie will be playing the Uvidaphone. And she does. When she plays the Uvidaphone, her color comes back and she's happy. Yet the music is horrible. Once done, yaks cheer for her? What? Especially the Uvidaphone's owner, who's like, Oh, you steal my instrument and not wash off mouthpiece before you play. That's very unhygienic. Good job. <laughs> and uh, there's a name for the yak, by the way. And her name is Yigrid. So, anyway, Yigrid just says, Pony, 
plays Uniform Uvidaphone terribly, but Pony is happy, and Uvidaphone is happy instrument. That means perfection. So, yay. Also, apparently, yaks are tone deaf. I no comment. Even though that one, even though, uh, what was her name? Yonda? Uh, Ygrid. Ygrid. Uh, yeah, sorry, I'm thinking too much of Yona. <laughs> well, Ygrid did play a very good, uh, set. So, I don't, here's the weird thing. This is actually a bonus of this episode. It makes the, la- the yaks look good. Yeah. But at the same time, too, it does go for what you always say. To make one look good, they have to make another look bad. Well, at least I can say now the true problem is Rutherford, and therefore my coup gains momentum. Uh, the thing that confuses me, though, like, so, because even though she played terribly, the one, yeah, was it Ygritte again? Yes, Ygritte. They say, uh, oh, they they played very good. And Pinky's like, really? You think so? And they're like, that one yak's like, it's an instrument of happiness. Like, wait, a, what? <laughs> but no, here's the thing. Um, the way I look at it is where you're a part of a group or a part of, uh, well, I won't say clan, but when you're a part of a group that does something for happiness, like let's just say that you are a part of and FGC, fighting game community. You play the games, even though you're not good at it, you still love it. And you go to their meetups and whatnot, and you play, and you get your ass kicked. But everybody just says, hey, no problem, man. Eh? We here just are playing, and if you're having fun, that's all okay. We, we need more people in the community, so we can just have fun. And at the same time, too, you could learn something from us, and hey, we have fun. So in my mind here, when I look at this, the yaks here, even though they don't look at Pinkie Pie's playing as perfection, she still has the heart for it, which I can really appreciate. Okay, Norman, what what fighting game groups have you been a part of? Oh, because oh. I want it. Oh, because because I'll, I'll tell you true. I'll tell you true. At a at a anime convention I went to one year, I went into I made the terrible mistake <laughs> of going into the video game uh, section, and I picked up and I picked up controller for Dragon Ball Budokai. Oh. And I'd never even touched the game. And the guy wiped the floor with me. I think I got a punch in, like literally just one punch. <laughs> uh, and then afterwards, some random kid is like, wow, you got pounds. <laughs> uh, it's like, so, so what, the, what game communities are you a part of where they're actually, you know, supportive and inclusive and like, hey, it's all for fun? Because how, so I want in on that action. How do I put this? Like, my community here is mostly adults and here's the thing we we don't really flaunt our egos because well if you flaunt your ego you're going to be a target and the thing is we in my community we have players who went to evo and that says a lot and if you went that far to just play a game and compete that means you're good and i here for one am passable I played with them, I lost. Even if I get a win, I'm happy. So, we here try to make everyone better. And there's a few things here and there, but still. Um, I don't know, our community is pretty awesome. Uh, unfortunately, we, I think mostly we've got just rotten kids around my area. Uh, there are these kids, these rotten kids. Where's Sapphire? I feel the need to shake my cane at her. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it could be playing uh, Budokai, that's why. Yeah, it's a really old game. Yeah. That. Oh, 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 I see how it is, Torterra. So you're getting in on it too, huh? <laughs> well, I didn't say, specifically say you were old. I just said the game was old. Yes, and how can I play the game unless I was old too? I'm on to you, sonny boy. <laughs> Silver, you probably right, need to play Dragon Ball Fighters. I played I played Dragon Ball when it was on the Super NES. Thank you very much. Oh, Boto Ken something. I love that game. But anywho, uh, if that episode ends, I guess... <laughs> Oh, no, 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 I'm not done being bitter. Wait, you have more to say? <laughs> Actually, yes. They end with them in Yakyakistan. They don't really show Pinky back in Ponyville or finding a compromise. I really would have liked if the closing shot had been the school courtyard with one of Starlight's soundproof bubbles <laughs> over a group, including Yona and maybe some fascinated ponies listening to Pinky play. 
showing that they found the balance, that there was, you could set up a time for Pinky to play and Starlight would protect the town's ears mm-hmm. and that'd be all you need. But no, we, we didn't get that. And so I'm left to just put on my bitter old man voice. Mirror! Yeah, that would be a much better ending. Mirror! Still, this is what we got. Um, the ponies are happy that Pinkie Pie is happy and they play on in yeah, Kyrgyzstan and whatnot. Yeah, so, yeah. so with that episode ends. So uh, let's go for discussion and final thoughts here. So <clears throat> the thing is with this episode here, like I mentioned before, the ponies, how they mentioned how Pinky should stop was not a good way to go at it. They should have handled it much better than what they did, but still, eh. Well, for me, this this episode will always be a, a example of how not to deliver critique. Unlike a, a lot of other situations, they do try to emphasize that they're doing this out of love, that they want Pinky to be happy, and they're they're trying to be supportive, even if they're telling her to stop. So, points for making a better effort than most, but it's still trying to discourage someone from uh, expressing themselves rather than trying to find a solution. True that, true that. And yeah, yeah I, I didn't really like how the ponies handled it. And I didn't really like how Pinkie Pie handled her <laughs> just like what happened after that. Like, really? You need to be depressed? Wow. Okay. I mean, depression hits people like a truck, but still, Pinky, you, you still could play it. Like, nobody's... All right, okay, people were stopping you. Ah, shoot. See, there's no win in this. There isn't. Here's the thing. During a debate, uh, an English professor said to the audience, too many people are more interested in being right than they are being effective. And I would qualify that it, what they're really, what he's really saying is they're interested in being righteous or projecting the image of being right. So if you do argue just to win, you're not really offering a critique anymore. True. That would be a debate or doom. Or just you trying to feel good about yourself. Hey, look at me. I'm so smart. Hmm. Yeah. But Twilight and her friends were being, they were trying to be kind, but they weren't being effective. And as a result, Pinky was not very effective. And therefore, this episode is not very effective. And playing in a Dragon Ball tournament is not very effective. Uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's the thing. Like Nobody's really finding a solution. Because... Uh, I don't know, man. Like They say that if you're not hurting people, then it's okay. Let's try to find a solution for this. But she's actually hurting people. Like, Pinkie Pie is technically hurting the public. They have to stop her, so yeah, I, I I don't know. Man, she likes making others smile, but instead of smiles, it's fear. I know. Well, I, honestly, I think I think they have, all have a nervous smile. It's like one of those smiles, where like I'm trying to be nice to you and don't want to hurt your feelings, yeah. so I'm smiling. Uh, and he's like, I can make you smile even when I bring you pain. Boys, <laughs> but anywho, uh, Silver, you got anything to add to the discussion? I really do like that Applejack was the one who held Twilight Cannibal. It's like, no, 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 we're not doing this again. <laughs> we're not going through the same song and dance. Yeah. Now, later in the uh, best gift ever, it's Applejack who talks Twilight down in a much more uh, calming, nurturing tone. And I like the array that Applejack can be very firm when she needs to be very supportive and nurturing when needed. It shows a great range for her. So there's always a silver lining to an episode. I've yet to see a My Little Pony episode that I was like, you can chuck this in the garbage and there's nothing, nothing uh, redeemable. I just say this otherwise, but still. Well, they can say that, but they're not me. True. Because I am me and I am saying things for myself. Yes. True, 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 true. But anyway, let's go into final thoughts. Silver. Oh, Danny boy, the episode, the episodes are calling. I don't want to hear that bagpipe anymore. <laughs> uh, the bagpipe gets a terrible rap. Mostly because it gets terrible players. <laughs> oh, with a chish. Like I say, this is a hard episode to really enjoy. And if I remember right, it was 
part of the summertime special early airing. It's like, of all the episodes you could have chosen, you chose this one? I know. It's a bump in the road. A noticeable one, not a derailing one. But it's it's def- like you say, it's definitely one I wouldn't try to convince anyone of the value of the show using this. Yeah. And Tara? I still kind of have mixed feelings on this. I mean, it's kind of memorable, but at the same time, I wouldn't really recommend this as like, oh, you should really, really watch this. This is very good. Because like, I, I, in my opinion, I still kind of get a mixed message on like what or why, because like they tell her to stop, but then after she's so depressed, even though her friends try everything to make her happy, and they're like, yeah, you know, what? you could just you go go play again. We're, we're sorry, we doubted you. It's like, wait, well, what? Well, like I'm, I'm just confused on what the lessons here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I totally agree with that one. And as for me, this episode was, eh. If I were to put it on a scale of 1 to 10, this would be a 4 there. It's not good, but it's not terrible. And the lesson, it takes a lot of, what's the word I'm looking for? Interpretation to get it. And there's a lot of ways to look at the lesson for this one. And... eh, it's hard. But in the end, we get to see more pony episodes. Yay! I don't know. I mean, when thinking about Pinkie Pie, like, annoying Pinkie, I, I kind of like the a friend in the Pinkie. Like, she's the right amount of annoyance where, hey, she's totally annoying, but she's she has some kind of goal, you know, to make Cranky Doodle Donkey, uh... Well, part of Ponyville, yay! Much welcomeness to be had. But in this one, like, oh, yay, Pinkie Pie likes playing the bagpipes. Yay! And, oh, gosh. But anyhow, yeah, I would recommend this. No, stop. So, anyhow, Silver, what are we going to do for next week's episode? Well, I think we need a break from ponies. I mean, you just heard some horrific music. And bad criticism, it's time to talk about something happy and fun and innocent. Yes. Mm -hmm. Though it might get kind of dark. Oh, okay. Let's take a talk. Let's have a talk about Little Witch Academia. Ooh, yes. It's been a long time. I'll get my witch costume. (laughs) It's been a long time waiting for Jeffrey, one of our Patreon supporters. Thank you so much for waiting. And yeah, next week we'll be. Talking about Little Witch Academia, the 2013 pilot episode. That's what I'm going to say. I think it is because there's also another one, 2015, and then the series later on. So you know what? We're just going to watch the first one first. Yes, and then we'll carry on from that point on. Yes. So, anywho, if you have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at themb3gmail.com. You can also reach us on the Twitters. The show's Twitter account is at the MBS Show. And my personal Twitter account is at Norman Sanzo. Silver, where can the good people find you? Well, you can find me on the Twitters under Silver Quill. Uh, you can find me under MLP Silver Quill on DeviantArt. And if you do a search on uh, the YouTubes, you can find me under either Silver Quill or After the Fact. I also post either an editorial or review every Wednesday on EquestriaDaily.com. Awesome, awesome. And do check out the, well, what you call this? Uh, do check out the article on the QDs. It's a good place to keep up to date with the comics and whatnot. It's really awesome. And Tara, where can the people find you? Well, they can find me on Twitter, Facebook, DeviantArt, and of course YouTube under the name Tortera1324. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And also, please subscribe to us on iTunes, YouTube. Don't forget to press the bell icon to stay up to date. And search the radio and also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on PonyLive.com. Also, do subscribe to the Review and Discussion Podcast on iTunes and Stitcher Radio. You'll catch us doing this, but only mobile. Yay. If you would like to support the show, you can do so at Patreon.com slash the MBS show. With every support, you'll get a week's already access to the Review and Discussion Podcast, exclusive and deleted content, and a sh- thank you from me. Talking about thank yous, I'd like to thank Amy, Lucky Knight, Tristan, Starstream, Burger Cat, Jeffrey, and myself, Lag. Thank you so much, guys. You're great. 
So anyway, I have been Norman Sanzo. I am the Silver Quill. I am Torterra. And we'll guys catch you next week with another fun episode from the show. See ya. The pipes, the pipes are calling. Well, I am also going to say goodbye, but we should end this in style. <clears throat> okay. And a one, and a two, and a you know what to do. There we go. <laughs> uh, that was good.